can't believe I'm saying this, but it's been about three weeks since I've touched a golf club or hit a ball. Christmas festivities going on, family gatherings, that sort of thing. I'm gonna hit this ball and see what happens. <laughs> Oh, the swing feels really, really weird. Out of touch. What'd you look at that? Ball first, divot strike. You know, this is one of those things in golf that is kind of like the impossible. You think that you can lose your swing or your contact's gonna get shot to crap if you take a break or any type of vacation. And while my swing felt really weird because I hadn't touched the club in so long, I was still able to hit the ball first, take a divot, nice and crisp strike. So today, I wanna to talk to you about creating a chunk-proof machine where you will only know how to hit the ball first and never hit behind the golf ball. So we'll talk about the things you need in your swing to never chunk it again, and also how you can prevent chunks from ever occurring in your swing, ever. So, let's get started. If you want to be able to strike the ball first and take a divot after it, the first thing you have to learn in your golf swing is to minimize variables. So variables are things like shifting. If my body is moving off the ball or towards the ball and my head is always moving around, my contact point on the ground is going to be affected. You see how? This is just a roaming contact point. I want you to think about purely contact point here. Where is this club coming into the ground? And everything that revolves around doing this, awesomeness, think about purely contact point. So shifting, that's a variable. Another variable in the swing could be like lifting your arms, having to drop the club, having to reroute the club, swing the club in different directions. All those types of things require timing. And I don't want you timing your golf swing either because that's a big variable. So if you want to do this time and time again, this is my second swing ever since taking a huge break. I was still able to hit ball first and take a divot. Despite my swing feeling completely out of whack from not practicing in a while. And that's because I've minimized variables. So the first variable we have to minimize is any type of shifting or swaying. So when I get over the golf ball, you notice how I'm very centered. It's like my body is stacked on top of it, like boxes, shoulders, hips over the knees. There's no drastic lean one way or this way towards a target because those, both of those things are going to change my contact point. When I get over the ball and I'm like this, stacked over top of it and I swing, there's my contact point on the ground in front of the ball. And if you were to just focus on, one, staying over the ball, avoiding any, instead of doing this, that club will come into the ground the same spot each time, or at least you greatly improve the chance of you striking the ball first and taking a divot after it. So here's me just staying centered over the ball. And that's another really pure strike. Now I feel my swing starting to come back. That feels great. The second thing you need to know is what's the other variable that controls contact? So that would be your lead arm. And your lead arm, if it stays straight throughout the entire golf swing, you're going to create a divot on the ground just in front of the golf ball. So assuming I stay centered over the ball, keep the lead arm straight, the club will always bottom out in the same spot. Always. Isn't that nice? That we can have the word always in golf, we can have some sort of predictability. It comes down to lead arm straight, staying over the ball. So the stay over the ball often comes in the form of feeling a little bit more of a weight forward. So putting some weight on my front leg, keeping the lead arm straight. And when I focus on just keeping that lead arm straight with that weight staying forward, don't do anything else. I hit the ball first, take a divot. That's because the golf swing's a circle. So, this is my low point of my swing right here. If I keep the lead arm straight, 
the weight staying in the same spot, that low point will be in the same spot. Predictability, chunk proof machine. So there's four pure shots without having hit a single ball in three weeks. I used to think that was impossible until I started doing these things. The next thing we need to look at is you're gonna wanna add some power. Before we add power, think about your trail arm now. So your trail arm also affects contact. If I swing into the golf ball and this arm straightens early, that's called early extension. And that's when the start, you'll start flipping and the weight's falling back. All those things are lead to thin fat shots all day long. So what you need to do is keep the arm tucked in. If the arm stays tucked in and the lead arm stays straight, there we go, good impact position. And I'm staying center of the ball so I've got one contact point. So I've got the trail arm tucked in, lead arm straight, a little bit of weight forward to stay centered over the golf ball. I hit the ball first. Now that one was a little thin. My first slight miss hit of the day. We got one better than that. Stay over it, trail arm tucked in, lead arm straight. There we go. Very solid strike right there. So what am I doing? I'm minimizing variables. I've eliminated three huge variables already. The first one was shifting. So you don't see me doing any moving my head off the ball or towards the target. Instead, you see my head staying in place and my shoulders turning in a circle. So there's no big shift or sway. Second thing you see me doing, you don't see the lead arm breaking down at either point in the swing. That's gonna keep this contact point the same. The last thing you see me doing, you got the trail arm tucked in. Staying folded here, staying folded into here. Both arms plow through to straight after impact. So that's a consistent contact point once again. Doesn't it sound awesome when you can just get over a ball without a whole lot of thinking, and I can say wait forward, arm tucked, trail arm tucked in, lead arm straight, swing, and just be able to hit it first, take a little divot after it. And without even practicing, without even doing anything for weeks. The strike is just as crisp as when I left, left for my break. And it's happening again, again, again. Yeah, sure, I had that one thin in there. But now I have a predictable contact point. And what you haven't seen me do is hit behind the ball. Chunk proof your swing. Yeah, I'm not hitting behind it. And you're never gonna hit behind it either. So the last thing would be, okay, we've built this chunk proof contraption how do we add some speed to the swing? Well, that's where the hips are gonna come in. I want you to think about your hips as a circle, as like a swivel, like this. I'm not much of a salsa dancer, but if we get these hips turning, it'll prevent you from swaying, which is one of the huge contact killers. You ever watch that movie? I think it was on the A&E Network. It was like, contact killers, unsolved mysteries of the golf swing. Well, anyway, if you missed it, it's like right here. The sway. Oh man. That is a, that's a straight up chunk. That is a foul throw a flag. So the way we stop that is we have to get rotational. Think about your golf swing as being rotational instead of linear. When you do this, it emphasizes the point that the golf swing is a circle and that you're keeping this contact point intact. So right now I'm focusing on turning my shoulders, backswing, downswing, and when I do this, I let my hips turn. So I let my trail leg straighten, I let my lead knee kick in towards the ball. I feel nice and light and fluffy. Check this out. Look at that, look at those, those soft, easy knees. Your knees will feel great, by the way, because they're not doing a whole lot of work. So when I allow these knees to work, nice little swivel, swivel back, and then shoulders explode through the ball. The hips will explode through the ball. Yeah, that's a lot of power. Doesn't matter what club in the bag. So here we go. Let's allow a little bit of swivel in these knees. 
Mm, that's tasty. You can hear it too. Whoosh. Still near. Easy. Easy, effortless swing. Chunk proof. By the way, I've got a free mini course where I'm teaching golfers how to do this. You can check it out. The link below, go.segudo.golf. Three steps, three top ball striking keys you need to know. I've got some of my best drills in there to make you an even better golfer. So we're staying light and fluffy with these knees, lead arms straight. There it is again. There it is again. Look at this line. Three weeks off and we still come back to this. I was really worried about filming today. I was like, man, I'm not gonna have anything to give you guys. Maybe my swing will, will, will it be there? Cause you know, I still struggle with that stuff from the traditional swing where it's like, oh, I used to practice hit thousand balls a week. And then I, if I didn't practice one day, I was all over. But then with this swing, it's like, okay, I can go on that cruise ship for three weeks. I can come back. It's, it's like I never left. I can do the whole, was it Bruce Litsky with the banana thing? Go fishing. You could do that too. There it is again. I love this swing. Just based on the fact that it's, it's really low maintenance. It's so powerful. You'll play great golf. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be consumed with, is my swing gonna hold up? Now, we don't have to worry about that. So today you've got the skills required to be a trunk proof machine. What I expect to happen now is that you're gonna go out there, hit the ball first, take a nice divot, have a ton more fun. So thanks for tuning in today and I'll see you in a future episode. <laughs>